Two years ago, there is no way you could have convinced me that I'd be using a battery operated power station to cook bacon in our shop and talking to you about power stations on camera. First off guys, this is another very interesting power station. I'm going to walk you through what to look for while you're buying one of these and show you on this one some things that could really go wrong or go right depending on how you want to look at it. Let's cook some bacon. We are using a New Wave 2 induction cooktop. This cooktop has to have a pan on the top of it before it'll turn on. I already checked it out and I know that about 375 here is going to take 1000 watts, which is what this battery inverter is rated for. You can see our voltage is staying very constant at this 110-ish, 111 area. We're going to start cooking some bacon and start talking about this unit. So this review started when I was on a Facebook group in the Camp Chef Woodwind Smoker section and a guy was using a smaller square sine wave unit to power a lot of delicate circuit boards and stuff on his smoker. That was definitely not good and it didn't end up good for him either. He ended up blowing out some circuit boards and I thought, well, people have to start learning as to what they're buying because you're not just looking for a pure sine wave inverter. These days you're looking for a lithium iron phosphate battery pack that's gonna last 2000 plus charges. And you can get nice higher end lithium ion ones like this guy that's sitting here, but it's only gonna probably last you about 500 charges. So when you're looking at the cost of these models, you not only wanna look at watt output, and what you're gonna use it for. You wanna look at what battery system is on the inside and what it can actually power and how many times you feel you need to charge it. So the lithium iron phosphate batteries are gonna last you upwards of 10 years before they lose 20% of their battery output. That's great. Lithium ion batteries are less expensive and they're gonna last about 500 charges before they start to lose that top 20% and maybe even more. Lithium iron phosphate seems to work better in the cold, but both of them have struggles once you get below 20 degrees. So in this situation, we have an analog, not 100% sure how to pronounce it. It's a 100 watt normal output for AC, 2000 watt peak. We do not have a lot of information here, other than right now we're currently charging the battery and we have our AC output on. We don't have watts in, we don't have watts out. It does have an MPPT, which means that if we hook up a solar panel to it, it has a computer system on the inside that will automatically adjust everything to make sure that the solar panel does charge this unit as fast as possible, pending the conditions and the solar panel you're using. So that's nice. It does have a USB-C and three USB-A outputs along with a 12 volt DC output and a cigarette lighter style output. You have three standard plugs for your AC outlet. And right here we can check again, we're still at 111 volts and we're at perfect 60 hertz. So it runs well. We can unplug here and see that we're already down eh, one-ish bar. And when we do unplug this unit, we get a small warning up top. And that warning is telling us that we're getting close to being over our volts or over our watt output. So that's not exactly great, but it is part of what you have to learn to watch for. Personally, if, you, if I was going to suggest a battery operated inverter for anyone, whew, smells good guys, wish you could uh, catch that through the YouTube. If I was gonna you know, just recommend one, I would recommend something that told you volts in or watts in and watts out. I think that would be a huge benefit for anyone because you could figure out Am I on the edge of what's happening here with this inverter? How long is it gonna last? And there's a lot of information that some of them give you. The less you pay, the less you get. Another huge factor in buying a battery operated inverter or power station is its ability to 
turn itself off if it's overloaded. That's not only gonna save your electronics that are plugged into it, but it's going to save a lot of abuse in any overheating to what's going on inside. Now we've looked at multiple lately that seem to not have the ability to efficiently turn themselves off. And I'm gonna wait till this bacon's done and get my father's induction stove top out of the way before I prove to you this, but this unit actually will not turn off again in an overload when I turn on 1500 watts of this heater. It'll just sit there and tell me a warning that it's too much. It will hold the voltage fairly well, but it's definitely not outputting like it should. And if you had something hooked up to it, like some sort of circuitry or anything like that, long term, you're going to do some damage. And that's not cool. And that's something that you can't figure out when you're on Amazon or anywhere else and you're going to purchase this. And that's what I'm hoping a lot of people can show you in reviews. So when someone says, look, let's overload this unit and watch it cut out, it's not just because they want to see what it'll do or anything like that. It's, it's a safety factor. And the safety factor here is low. So that's not good. It can cause fires, problems, long-term issues, break things for you, and that kind of sucks. I will also like to ask you, when you think about buying a battery-operated inverter or battery anything, what are you gonna do with it when it no longer works? And are you okay with this working for a year or two years and then something on the inside failing and it no longer work? That happens in battery-operated tools, that happens in a lot of different places, not just tools or anything with batteries, but things break. And unfortunately, our landfills are probably gonna start to get full of not only these types of battery-operated tools, but all kinds of different battery-operated things, unless we recycle them. And add to the fact battery-operated cars, which everybody thinks is our green way of getting out. And as an electric vehicle owner myself, I, I never would have thought I would have owned one, but I absolutely love it for racing, it's quick. We own a Tesla Model S that is super fast and absolutely enjoyed taking it to the racetrack and having fun with it. Super consistent and it is fun to drive on the road also because of how quick it is. Maybe it's not fast, it's quick. Let's put it that way. And what's gonna happen to that after that battery system fails? Is it gonna get recycled, is that car which is basically a piece of technology, not really a car, is that going to last more than eight, 10 years? Like many gas cars can go many, many, many years beyond that and not cause a hazardous problem. So if you're just picking this up for fun or you know, and using it, at least recycle it when you're done. Make sure that it can get somewhere so that this doesn't end up with anything in the landfill because there's a lot of bad chemicals in here. And lithium is not good for our environment. We'll just kind of leave it at that. It's something else to think about while you're purchasing these. Well, our bacon's almost done and our inverter is still running quite well, even with it unplugged now. Uh, oddly enough, we're not getting any warnings anymore with the fact that we're still on medium high. Maybe that's because the pan's hotter. Maybe it doesn't take as much watts to get there. Problem is we don't know that unless we plug something else into this to tell us what's happening. I think that's just one more problem in this whole game. This guy here at a thousand watts is about $700. And that seems expensive, but you can get much more expensive ones out there. And some of them have a little bit more quality to them where they'll tell you the watts in, watts out. And some of them will also have the lithium iron phosphate batteries rather than lithium ion. So I guess in some ways you get what you pay for again. And you just have to watch out for that a little bit. But if you're looking for something like this, I'll gladly leave the link in the description so you can use it to purchase from or research for other items that you might be looking for. Always interesting. Appreciate you hanging out with me while we cook some bacon. Not always something that we do on this channel, but definitely a little change. And I enjoy just kind of chatting with you guys about these inverters and just seeing what's happening. So if you do have any questions or comments, leave them below. As always, I'll ask you to give me a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.